with that out of the way, then we know this is the handler. We know that we're including login.php. We have home.php. Let's go ahead and look at the the actual logic behind verify login and verify session because those are the two main things here. All right, so this is our class, uh, class login. We have this public uh, uh, property for this called user. Uh, we'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, and then we have our constructor method. And in our constructor, what we're doing is, A, we're globalizing our users array from our config file. Remember, because it was created in the global scope, and so now we're inside of a function, we have to globalize it in here. And then what we're doing down here is basically capturing that so we don't have to globalize it in every other function. We're capturing it as this uh, property, uh, or this, this property called users. So that allows us to then use this property throughout the rest of our class. The other thing we're doing is starting our session because anytime you want to use sessions, you have to start the session at the uh, highest point, really. And in this case, this is pretty high up in our system. We've if you remember from our load.php, we include the uh, the config file, and then we include this login class. So this session is getting started basically right out because because it's in the constructor method, it's getting started basically right after the config file, which is fine. It just needs to be started before there's any actual output. Well, there's not going to be out any output in the config file, so this works just fine. So we get our users array all set for us to be able to use this again. Remember, this is our actual usernames and passwords from our config file we start our session that's what we're doing in our constructor and we're instantiating an instance of it at the bottom of this file so basically every page that this is included into you're going to instantiate a, an instance of this class and then you're going to start your session you're going to get your users array all set up so you're basically pr primed and ready to, to to work with this just by including it into uh, a particular file all right, so verify login. So what we did is we passed in our post data. So our post data is just a username and password. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to check and see if the username and the password are actually set in that post data. And that's why we're using an or statement here. So if this one is, if the username is not set or the password is not set, either one is not set, we're just gonna return false. and our session uh, our uh, session data won't get created and therefore they won't be able, they won't be authorized as logged in and they won't be able to access protected content so um, anything short of this session right here essentially getting created is not going to allow them to log in so uh, returning false up here makes it so they can't log in next thing we're going to do is we have kind of we have a kind of custom method here and essentially what this does, it's just like, it's, it's a lot like the in array function in PHP, except what it does is it actually goes kind of one level deeper because of the way our array is set up. But essentially what this method is doing is it is checking the username that was passed and it's looping through our users array from our config file to see if that username exists in our config file. That's what this method is doing. You can look down here to see how it does it but I mean uh, as long as your users array looks like the one that I have in the config file this function will work just fine basically what it's doing is it's just looping through the array first and then running in array on the elements inside of the array so if we look at our config file because it's a multi-dimensional array you have this array it's a looping through each one of these and each one of these is an array so then it's checking this individual array right here to see if this username exists. That's essentially what that that uh, method is doing right here. And then it's going to, if it does exist, it's going to return the actual item. So it's going to return all of, it's going to return this array right here. Or if it matched this one, it'll uh, return this one. And of course, if it doesn't match any, it's going to return false. So that's how we, that's essentially how we authenticate a login. We take the username that was passed. If that username exists, we grab that particular uh, user data, that array of data right here. And then what we do next is 
We, so we've returned that from this. So this is our array of data. The username exists. So this is our array about that particular user. And so we've stored that, that as this user now. So this is that array data from the config file. And if that's not false, because uh, this method returns false if the username wasn't found. So if it's not false, we know we have use, that username exists. And now what we're going to do is we're going to check the password from our post data against the password from the that particular user in our config file. So we're just checking to see if the, mass, the passwords match, which of course makes sense. If the passwords match, then what we're going to do is going to set a session variable called, variable called username equal to the username that we got from our config file. So this is what we're, this is the big thing that we're after here. Basically, if the username, what, what all we're doing up to this point is checking to see if the username exists in our config file, in our users array, and if the password that was submitted in the form matches the password that we have in our config file for that user. So again, that's what you would imagine that, that you would do. If it exists, and if all that matches, then we're setting this session variable so that we can now check to see if this session variable uh, has been uh, exists when we verify our session down here because we verified the password now we we don't want them to have to log in on every uh, on every page load right because that would obviously be uh, really annoying so what we're doing is we're saving the username as a session and then we're just checking that uh, going forward and then of course we're returning true in case we want to run anything off of this for for displaying messages and so forth. and if, of course if none of this uh, if this fails at some point we're just going to return false so again verify login it's checking to see if the username exists it's checking to see if the password for that user matches and if so it's setting a session variable called username equal to the username that was that was submitted and that is in the the, the config file all right so that's verify login now that if we go back to index that's why here all we need to do is we to to verify the login is is run that and we don't need to run any else you know sort of if else statements off of this either the when this verify login runs either that session variable is going to get created or it's not and then from there well, it's the same as every page load. Then it, we just verify whether that, that session variable uh, exists or not. And we, we then include the, the proper uh, template file based off of that. So uh, handling logins is the whole point is just to create that session variable. Okay, so then we need to verify the session. So what we do in verifying the session is, uh, again, going to be pretty straightforward. So what we do is we grab that session variable the one we just created up here session username so we grab that now of course if we try to grab this and it doesn't exist then all the rest of this is going to fail okay so but we grab that that uh even we don't want to just check that this session variable is set we every page load we want to check and make sure that it matches a user that's in our uh, in our in our config file, because it is possible that someone could just figure out a way to set session username to true and then be able to. There, there's ways that people can get sort of around that. Now, session variables, it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit more difficult, but we want to just add an extra layer of security here so what we're doing is we're grabbing that session username and then we're going to run it back through this in array r that same method from down here and check to see if that username that's in that session uh variable matches what is in our config file so every page load we're taking that session variable and we're checking it against what's in our config file so that we're making sure that it, it matches up and someone doesn't, you know, log into uh, their account and then try to go into, there, there's ways that people can kind of hack around this if you don't do that. So uh, again, we're just checking on every page load to make sure that the user that is, we think is logged in is the one that is actually logged in. They exist in our, 
uh, uh, our config file, and we're not going. We're only going to display their data. Okay. So when we verify the session, and that username does exist in our config file, so if that is not equal to false right here, then we're going to set this user, the this property of user, equal to that user that we just pulled from our config file. So again, this is going to have all that array data. And then we're going to return true uh, if that this the session is verified and false if not. Now this is important right here because this is what gives us access to our data. Because we have set this to the, the property for this class, if we come back over to index, you can see that we are setting right here user equal to that property from our login class. Again, remember, we instantiate an instance of it down here and we set that to login. So when you do that, you can access class properties this way right here. And what we've done is we've set that to what was from our the data we have in our config file after verifying the session. So we verify the session, essentially big picture wise, we're verifying the session, verifying that the username is valid, and then we are grabbing the data about that user, and we are storing it into this user variable right here so that we can access it on these pages here. Okay, so from that, if we now come over to home.php and we're logged in, you can see that we are using that user variable right here to display the name. So that is what, when we display this name right here, that's what does that, is all of that stuff grabbing the data, verifying the session, and then echoing it out right here, okay? And then, last but not least, we have, I, I've included some template stuff in here. This is really, really simple sort of template stuff, so I wouldn't get too wrapped up on it. You can quite literally, the reason I wrote this the way that I did with the index file and that this being the handler and using includes and all that sort of thing. The reason I did that is so that when you're building these pages right here, the the login page, uh, the home page right here, you can build these pretty much like just regular template files that you may have seen me do tutorials on before that you're used to. Meaning you can include a header, uh, you can include a footer, and you could include bootstrap into all of this. You don't have to worry about the actual login system in terms of all of that when it comes to how you're going to template this out. So again, I've got a header and a footer. We can look at these real quick. I just made them really basic. Just got the doc type, the HTML tags, the head tag, basic head tag stuff. And again, if you've watched any of my templating videos, all the stuff that I talk about in there in terms of how to go about templating would apply uh, in here as well. Footer is really simple, just closing those tags. If we go to style, just some really basic styling here. Um, I, my recommendation is if you're going to go in and really template this out, I would just kind of get rid of all of this CSS and kind of rewrite the CSS from scratch how, how you want to. And again, because of the way this is done, you can put whatever you want into these header files. You don't have to worry about the login part of it. So that's what makes this part of it kind of important and, and handy is you're not having to inject all of this stuff into your template files. You've really separated the login logic from the templating logic and you can just template how you want. And then you have access to this in these files here, these template files, you have access to this user variable, which is the main one that you need access to for displaying user data. And you could of course expand that user data as much as you want. All right, so that's a, 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 a simple setup here for, for using this. If you want to add, again, if you want to add users to this, this is where you would do this. Again, this is something you would not distribute to, to other people. This would be something that you're using for internal use that only you're going to be seeing the code on. You're not giving this to other people, or if you are giving it to other people, you're a, it's like a friend of yours, and you're erasing this user's array and the usernames and passwords before you you give it to them so they don't know what your usernames and passwords are. All right, so uh, that'll do it for this lesson. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.